Hello, uh, I'm Sebastian Fran, uh, an English teacher in France, and uh, I've decided to share with you a series of videos to show you one of my projects uh, I do with my students. So I, today I've decided to speak about um, a project which belongs to a block, the block one, Generations Living Together. The objective is to make a student think about the links we can have together because um, today um, there are a lot of generations living and working together and I think it's important to know the different aspects of the different generations how the generations have been constructed throughout the time uh, by opposition to the previous one and by creating a new one and then to be opposed and to be new and sometimes the new generation uh, reconstruct uh, values of the the oldest one with a new perspective so the unit a is from baby boomer to generation z at the workplace and the focus on uh, jobs because it's something important today and the question is, how can generations manage to work together? So for this unit, I, I've decided to work more particularly from reading to writing to develop these two uh, skills. And the project is writing a mail to be selected for a TV show uh, because I think that it's better if we create a scenario in which the students have to make a kind of a role play, something like that, to try to give more motivation at the classroom. So there are two missions in this unit, the mission mission A1, so which is in fact focused on the definition of the different uh, generations and the labels they have been created. And the second mission is um, more particularly focused on uh, working together. Um, so um, in the first step, it's uh, a project I've decided to do at the beginning of next year. Uh, before this project, um, because in the first year at high school, uh, I've decided to make a um, placement test to try to see the levels of my students um, in each uh, skill. Uh, meaning uh, listening, watching, reading, speaking, discussing and writing. So before this project I have a vision of my students in terms of levels they have reached and then the levels they have to reach and I will explain later how uh, I've decided to do that. Uh, in the first uh, part uh, so I'll ask them to have a copy book, a big one, big size and I give them some documents to stick on the first pages and it's a very important step because in that in, in this moment uh, I use classroom English to give them an immersion um, in English for orders or um, advices or to follow the rules in English to make them develop the understanding of uh, orders and rules so I give them some specific documents and the first one is a document I have created which is in fact a classification of grammatical items according to the levels so in A2, B1, B2 okay B2 is the level they have to reach at the end of high school before going to the real life if you want so uh, I have for the different items in terms of difficulties and I have put the, the, the items in each level from the, the easiest one to the most difficult one to give them the idea that the grammatical items are in fact more and more complex uh, in the creation and the building of them for instance in terms of um, aspects of models we have the first aspect of models for instance simple forms like can, must, will and after we can have um, more complex forms with uh, other aspects with uh, progressive forms adding progressive forms or adding um, 
I would say, past forms together, and it's more and more complex in the construction. So I give them uh, this paper on the copy book, I give them um, a list of irregular verbs, and I give them also um, the, uh, a picture of uh, the mocks I can give. So in the French system, uh, we give uh, mocks out of 20, but uh, I have uh, using um, a progressivity with colors uh, corresponding to the levels we can find and the, the belt we can find in sports like judo, for instance. And uh, in my classroom, we talk about colors more than mocks. The mocks are only on the software for mocks for the parents and the, the system the institution, but uh, at the classroom we use colors instead. And uh, I have thought about maybe pictograms to help the students who are colorblind, uh, to be sure that everybody can be, um, can use this system. So these are the documents I give them, so they stick them on the copy book. Uh, during my lesson, I also use a tool which is Classroom Screen, which is uh, a tool which uh, helps me to use a timer during the activities because it's important to, to time the, the activities, to give the students a focus on the work and to try to work on the concentration processes in which they have to focus on the task and not to be maybe uh, disturbed by different things in the environment and uh, noises or something like that. And then the, this um, tool is very useful because there is a kind a lot of widgets. We can use it more particularly a timer here uh, to use. So after having given them these documents, I can begin my lesson and I will explain in another video the, the beginning of the lesson. I'll see you soon.